Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today I would like to talk about co-equalizers. A kind of a little bit of a strange concept, but they also fit into really nicely into this world of limits. And actually really, really nicely, as we will see later, not, not in this video anymore, but later. Um, we'll see what it is. Kind of you could think of, you would need to construct a graph. And one of the standard steps of constructing a graph is to have double edges. Uh, so more than parallel edges, so more than one edge between two vertices. And this is kind of the minimal example of such a double edge, uh, multiple parallel edge uh, limit is the equalizer. That's why it's so important. Um, but today is not the topic for limits. So I would like to motivate it by staring a little bit at kernels. So um, let's get started. So in this whole setup of limits, whatever those are, universal properties, kind of my main category example is always vect because it's kind of the nicest one out there ever. So vector space is the best category in the sense, um, kind of really, really well behaved. And in some sense, you could think of, if you want to, of course, it's a little bit hand wavy, you can think of it's always a little bit hand wavy. But if you want, then you could think of this K vector spaces as kind of the standard category. Uh, in the sense, and if a category has a certain number of uh, not having a certain number of whatever products, uh, limits, direct sums, whatever, um, then it's kind of not vector spaces and kind of measures how far you are away from vector spaces. Um, that's kind of my motivation by always look at vector spaces. But you kind of can ignore that for now. And we just have a look here. Um, so for vector spaces, we have seen vector space has very, very nice universal type of objects. So the zero object and the direct sum uh, was a really nice uh, and important, um, well, initial and terminal object was a zero object and kind of product and co-product. If you ignore infinite dimensional things or infinite constructions, then the direct sum is a product and the co-product. So it's kind of very nice in vector spaces. Um, are there any other important constructions that you will see for vector spaces? Hmm, let's think about it. Of course, I know the answer. So what about kernels, for example? So where are kernels? Kind of the question, where are my kernels? So maybe these are type of universal objects as well. And there are also the co-kernels, which is kind of the image. It's less well known than the kernel, but it's really just the dual construction. It's um, the space modulus the image. So it's basically the image, just the quotient by the image. So what I want to look at here are kernel and image if you want. So where are current kernel and image in this uh, world of universal objects and vector spaces? So where are they? Right, kind of seems to be like a fair question. So can we realize kernel and image as universal type of objects? Mm, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Of course, the answer is yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have started the video the way it is. But a priori, it also could be no. But there's a good hint why we should believe that this is true, because somehow universal objects should arise everywhere, right? And kernels and images are, ex of course, extremely important in um, vector spaces. And kind of the whole point is, so let's have a look, uh, that the definition itself looks set-based. So whenever you have a set-based definition, that's not really amenable to category theory. That's not really good for category theory. You really want non-set-based descriptions. So um, the problem here, the usual definitions of kernels and images are set-based. You all know how this looks like, of course. So the kernel is uh, this, is this description and the image is this description. Um, so the kernel is a certain set and my operator here is L and it's a certain, it's a set of all elements that are sent to zero by L, which is not, as I said, not a really good description. Image has a slightly different description, of course, kind of the dual one. It's a bit more complicated, but it's again, set-based. And whenever you have something that is set-based, it's really not clear how that should work in category theory. And what you really, really need to do is the main task as soon as you have satisfied this task, you're basically good to go. The main task here is to get rid of the sets. And this might look a little bit strange if you see it for the first time, but actually it should be, philosophically speaking, the correct definition, whatever that means in huge quotation marks, whatever a correct definition is. A definition can't be wrong, right? But there could still be, kind of, at least philosophically speaking, as I said, a correct definition. Um, so certainly from didactical, for, from the didactical point of view, it makes more sense to kind of introduce the kernel as it is here, but uh, kind of from, from the philosophical point of view, we should introduce the kernel as follows as a universal type of object. Um, and it works as follows. It's, it's called an equalizer in the end. An equal, it's a special case of the equalizer, if you want. 
an equalizer is this type of diagram. So as I said, now you start with this graph, which is a kind of the easiest graph with, with parallel edges. And you, you want to have a universal object for this graph. And what you do is you put it here and you usually call it the equalizer. And we'll see in a second how this really looks like in the general definition. So let's, but first of all, let's have a look at the kernel. So, so here's a, a set free definition of a kernel. So the kernel of the map L, so this is what I'm looking for, it works as follows. I put L on, let's say, the top arrow, and I put zero on the bottom arrow. This is how it looks like. So here uh, at the bottom from, let's say, V to W. And the kernel is kind of the universal object that you can stick uh, on the left-hand side. It includes into V such that this equation holds. So uh, L and yota, yota is my uh, inclusion, is the same as zero and yota. So if you include the kernel, that's kind of the point of the kernel, right? If you just uh, restrict your map to the kernel, you can't distinguish it from the zero map. And this is all I'm saying just without writing down any sets, right? So the crucial equation here is that, well, this diagram in some sense commutes because going the top way is the same as going uh, the bottom way. You have two ways to go here because we have two parallel edges. And yeah, that's about it. And of course, the co-kernel can be described absolutely dually. By now, we understand that category theory always comes with a co-construction, uh, so there's some duality going on as well. And yeah, so this is a set-free definition. And as soon as we have a set-free definition, we are basically done. Right? So here are the diagrams. You can read the text, but basically here are the diagrams that what we need. Um, so, uh, the equalizer is here, and the co-equalizer is here. Um, and it works as follows, as I said, you have this universal diagram and let's, let's focus on the equalizer. You put it here and it should satisfy this universal type of construction. So whenever you have another equalizer and it comes with the map, the inclusion map into X, whenever you have another equalizer, uh, it should uniquely factor through the old equalizer. That's kind of the point. Mm. So it has, again, it's universal object. It's given by universal type of property. In this case, the universal type of property given, I say it again because it's important for this type of diagram, the two arrow diagram. Right? The equalizer is a universal object for the two uh, arrow diagram. And it, it just really just, it means that while well, this diagram commutes, so this way is the same as going this way. And here dually this way is the same as going this way. And it's usually with those uh, universal type of objects, they might or might not exist, depends a bit on the category. As I said, in some sense, I want to think of categories which have those objects as being close to vector spaces. And because for vector space, just everything exists, vector space is just too good as a category. And I want to think of all the others um, as being kind of far away from vector spaces, whatever. But the point is, so they might exist or they might not. But kind of the point is, if they exist, they should play a huge role in your category because they're kind of unique uh, universality forces them to be unique. Um, and these uh, notions are dual, but I shouldn't have written limits and co-limits. I should have written equalizers and co-equalizers. I'm already ahead of myself. Um, of course, there are also uh, limits and co-limits, and this will be dual. And this will be certain types of uh, limits and co-limits. Anyway, um, yeah. So, but. The kernel is just a special case. So um, in general, for example, um, you could have different kinds of uh, equalizers for so here, more equalizers. So this was a kernel construction. But you can also, for example, the pre-image uh, of an element is the equalizer of those two maps, uh, so F. And um, the map sends everything to Y. And the, the equalizer, by definition, because the, the, the inclusion here, so it should still be this, um, this equation. Let me give this guy here the, just the name G, just to not write it again. Um, and if G is the map that sends everything to Y, then the universal type of object here should be the F inverse. And here G is, G is zero, so the universal type of object should be the kernel. So it kind of equalizer is more general than the kernel, but it, it's totally fine um, to think of it like being the kernel in a more general setup. So, for, for example, it also works in sets, and in sets you don't have a zero, so uh, being the kernel doesn't really make sense, but being an equalizer is certainly totally fine. It totally works. Um, yeah, 
And it will turn out that those equalizers are not just a special case of a limit, but kind of one of the prototypical examples of a limit. There will be a huge statement, maybe it's not super huge, but it's very nice that kind of limits exist if and only if products and equalizers exist, which kind of justifies the notion of a kernel. Right? You only kind of need to know products uh, with the direct subset in vector spaces and kernels which are equalizers and vector spaces, and then you're good to go. Then you kind of know all the limits around. And of course, there's a core statement, like if you have co-equalizers and co-products, then you again go to go, but we will see that in a later video. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.